So next thing that we are going to see is another important concept around service catalogs. So we have three main concepts inside service catalog. One is items, called the maintain items. Second one is order guides. And the next one is record producer. So what are these service catalog actually? So consider this as a, uh, you know, when you step into restaurants, you get the menu, right? So it's almost relevant to that. Service catalog is a menu of items what the company can offer to end users. So this is where I go ahead and uh, you know create my uh, plan. So I can go ahead and create uh, some records, keep that to the end user's consumption and the end user you know, from service portal or if they have access to service, now they can log in and create a request based on whatever that uh, you know, we are provisioning. So service catalog is like a menu which has a list of items that I can offer. And this is done with the help of maintain items, record producers, and order guides. And all these are in the back end driven by workflows and flow designers. So flow designer is the latest concept. I can say workflow has already become legacy, but the platform still supports both workflow and flow designer. Flow designer has the latest UI features. Uh, the look and feel is good. Anything that we can do in Workflow can be done in a flow designer, but flow designer has additional features uh, like actions um, and uh, reusable actions, which, you know, creating custom activity, which is a little easier. And those things cannot actually be done in a workflow. So you'll have to, uh, you know, stick with flow designer uh, whenever you have those kind of requirements. So get comfortable with using uh, flow designer because this is the latest one and uh, any new, uh, you know, requirements that you are put forth, flow designer is the first thing that you should look into when you want to do a sequence of activities, because this is what it defines what happens to the request. So as a end user, I go ahead and request something. What should happen in the back? And I cannot script everything, right? So I can write a flow. I can ask the particular request to go through the flow that we are defining. So let us go ahead and uh, look into it. Maintain items, order guide, and record producer are the three different features, or you can also say types that you have in the service catalog. Maintain items are directly the one that um, you can see it in the portal right away. So you can go to service portal. And this is kind of the UI that our end user is expected to see. As and when the end user logs in, we can show this particular portal page for the end user because they may not be comfortable with this particular interface, whatever that we are working. So uh, admin and ITL user can have this interface, but for an end user, it is preferred to have portal. And I have request something option. So if I go ahead and request something, all the items that are configured for me will be available. So if I want to get a Apple iPhone request, if I want a power bank supply, and let's say if I want something related to hardware, I can go ahead and check for hardware items that are currently provisioned by this organization. So I can go ahead and make these requests. And all these requests will have their own workflows. So for example, let's say I go ahead and oh, yeah, raise this Apple iPhone 13 request. This is an item actually. So when I click this, it will take me to a page where I can raise this particular request. And let's say this is a replacement for a lost phone. I'm going to say no. Monthly data elements, I'm going to go unlimited. Let's say I want product red. And we'll go with 5 GB. So if we have got all these, I'm sure that's that total price has gone jacked up to $1,100. And the delivery type is also given. You can add this to card or I can directly go ahead and order. So let's go ahead and order. So order confirmation, again, this is for me. And if I want to give any additional information, I can go ahead and give all these. So let us go ahead and check this out. So now that we have placed this order, we have this request now. So observe that this is the request. Whenever a request is created, we have three items. 
three different records actually working in the backend. One is request, second is the actual request or item that has been requested. And the third one is what happens in the back end when someone requests. So someone has to go ahead and you know check in the stock room if the device is available or not, and then deliver it to the user, right? These are all the different tasks related to the item. So request, requested item, and task are the three things that happens whenever a request is raised. So let's look at the request table. So we have my request. I am just gonna open this. Currently we are in my request view. Let's move to default view. You can see the 11 is here. This is the one that we just requested. So if we open this request, we can currently see that this will be pending approval because the price is around too much. And you can see who is the approver here. Just on a high level to look at it, it is the workflow that is helping in the back end to follow this process. We also see requested item here. And the requested item is currently pending for approval on the request side. So nothing else can be done at this point in time because it is waiting for approval on the request level. So what we can do, uh, we can check on show workflow. This will show the current status of this particular workflow. We are not actually opening the workflow. This is the workflow that is happening for this particular record. So as and when uh, this gets created, we can see that this is currently waiting for approval. And we also see the approvers here. So I can open this. And since I'm an administrator, I can actually approve from here. Ideally, Eric should log in and approve this. Since we are playing around, let's go ahead and see this. I'll just refresh this. You can see that the particular request is approved and this section is ended and the same will get reflected in the RITM. The stage is on fulfillment. So which means it is approved and the next set of workflow activity are getting triggered. I mean, that is a workflow for the request and for each and every item there will be a dedicated workflow for request. This is always going to be the workflow in this particular instance. And when it is RITM, every different item will have its own workflow. For example, we can go ahead and look at this workflow. We can see that this one is particularly, you know, procurement is not turned on. So it has already went on fulfillment process. So when the fulfillment process is kicked in, there is a task created for it. And it says, order from MNDAR or moving from install. So this is a task that we go for a dedicated team. And these are the three items, uh, so three different records that comes in the picture. So request, request item and task. Task is the actual activity where a user actually, uh, you know, goes ahead and work. So I'm gonna assign it to some group, I believe. Okay, we need to check for whom can assign. So let us go ahead, check for users. At this point in time, you're not having any users. So let's go ahead and just close this. So now assumption is we have ordered from Mendar or you know there is a stock available and I have moved that into stock and we have one more task here. This task is around receiving the item. Again, I'm gonna go back to our workflow. If we refresh, it will honor this. Once this is fulfilled, it is awaiting delivery. And once the delivery is confirmed, that is the delivery is actually happening to me. I'm procuring it from my inventory. From inventory, I'm taking this to uh, my organization. And once it is there with me, I'll go ahead and close this. I'm saying that I have received this item and let's go ahead and configure this meeting. As in when you request some device in your organization, right? It needs to go through certain configuration processes. They'll set up VPN, they'll set up you know, some tracking 
uh, tools to make sure you know even if it is lost it can be found out and those things can be configured assuming that this is done you can close this and finally now this needs to go to your desk that's where again field services will come in this needs to get delivered to the customer whoever, whoever has requested it so again the workflow will get updated every time whenever there are activities done you go to this you can see that this is already there and then next activity is nothing but completed and relevant states will get updated on the ratm but at this point in time you can just go ahead and close this one so the flow of the service catalog is similar the one that we have been talking about is the item you can actually look into the item this item looks like this so we can go ahead and uh, create this you can say configure item so similarly how we created a table uh, we can actually go ahead and uh, configure it by navigating to maintain items table so you go to maintain items table the table name is sc cat item click on new give names fill all these details you can actually take this for reference some demo data will be available give the variables needed and all those so we'll quickly create one but we are not going to create this particular thing where uh, we need to uh, you know create the workflow and all those we'll create workflows for a different use case and uh, you can see how it works but on a high level you can open maintain items look into what all items it already has you can reuse one of them and then uh, you know uh, get an idea about how things work so this is on maintain items let us open the workflow editor also so it will have all it will showcase us all the workflow that is currently available for us which you can either reuse or create something from scratch it's pretty simple i can go ahead and create a new workflow or else we see all the workflows that are already readily available for me which i can go ahead and reuse so this is one custom workflow clicking on it will actually open it you can always send it for approval and then create a task so workflow mostly whatever activities that you want to add everything will be available here approvals roll back some custom activities you can go ahead and define and uh, all those will get honored at the time of rtm creations so these are the different items mostly available out of the box uh, we can uh, you know open get through this everything that is defined here in the maintain items will be available for us in the portal for consumption so next thing is let us talk about order guides and record produce record produce is the one that we'll be creating but order guide is one more feature that is provided as part of the service catalog which allows us to do a bulk order so what happens is when i create one item it actually creates multiple item in the back end so we have this new hire observe what happens when i go ahead and uh, search for new hire so i can search new hire the new hire from the order guide is available as and when the new hire is selected you know i can decide which group this person to, should join let's say development and then click on next it will ask me what all options does this new hire need he needs a laptop he needs a monitor a new account needs to be created vpn so all these are different items in the back end action so you see the standard laptop if we go ahead and search in our catalog we might have that as a separate item here Uh, it's better if we go into this. So this particular order guide is capable of creating multiple requests as and when a single request is placed, and everything will be configured here for us. so once we have this it is said that it needs to create a bulk order we have all the variables we have the rule base here all the items are actually available for me this so standard laptop this is a dedicated item observe this is catalog item guide 
Let's say the table name. This is catalog item. So all these are defined as a single item, and if configured on an order guide, it can create a multiple request for us. I'll just go ahead and place this. He gave us a summary. Sample word. Sample. Word. Got the summary. Let us go ahead and part of this. So it's going to be the same. A request would have been created. We need to check this request table. So we can directly go to the URL, do a list. This will open the list view. Open this request and approve it. This point in time, it is waiting for approval. Let us right click here and approve. This will approve this request. And I can see already there are five items that this has created. So order guide is something that will allow us to create bulk orders if one order is placed. And all these items will have its own workflow. So if I open you know, this one and this one, they, both of these items will have its own dedicated workflow. So items will have dedicated workflow. Request will have a single workflow. You can see that this is procurement flow. Ideally, everything follows this procurement flow. And hopefully, even this one follows this procurement flow. Yeah, this is service catalog item. Because, so it is already there. It needs to go through all these approvals. So most items will have its own flow. And then we can define as and then uh, there is a flow required. If you need to customize, you can go ahead and do that. So we'll quickly see. Um, we'll play around with flow designers and all those. At that point in time, we might get some more idea. So let's go ahead and create a record producer for us now. We saw what is a catalog item. That is a maintain item. We saw order guide. Now we need a record producer to create our service provisioning request. So navigate to record producers. Go ahead and click on new. Now let's go ahead and create a record producer. Record producer is something that you know allows you to create a record in any desired table. So we can say create and request the table that is going to be what we are going to select is you underscore service provisioning request is our table name. I can leave everything as default. Let's go ahead and add some description. Use this to create service request description. This allows to create internet service request. And assign engineers to work on it. So you're going to redirect to this indicator task. And this is a simple script, which we can use it to, uh, you know, decide what happens when this record producer is used. So I'm going to keep it simple and save this. Now we need to add this to a place in our portal, right? So you can see in our portal right now, I can place this somewhere in our request. So request service has some categories and catalogs. So inside this category, probably you can go ahead and say, Let's say okay, yeah, we'll just put it in can we help categories. So we can decide where this should be available. Let's say this is service request. So we'll keep it in service catalog. The category is let's say can we help. Placing this here, I'll keep portal settings. Let's hire attachments and all those. I'm going to quickly save this. Once I do that, observe that as and when I click on can we help section. The one that we created will start showing up. 
meeting designer, internal plan, password request. Yeah, create version request, the second one. Use this request to create service request. So this is the one that we just created. And at this point in time, we don't have any data mapping. This allows to create a service request and assign engineers to open. This is the one that we did. And I'll quickly open our service provisioning request just to show you what happens. So now we have 11 records. So if I go ahead and uh, click on this, it will actually create me a new record. This one gets created and we can look into this. And I can see there are 12 records at this point in time. So now what I need is if I look at the 12th record that just got created, which is this one, let us pull in some more data. Let's say created, then sort this created, and then we can see that this is just not created and the data is actually empty. There is no plan detail, there is no price information and all those. So I can go ahead and create some variables to showcase that. So we don't need number information, number will get automatically populated. All we need is to directly map the field to plan and then total price. A single line text, keep the order as, let's always go by hundreds. The one that we need is plan. I can just say plan. Okay, submit this. So let's go back to our provision request. Let's add one more column. That is going to have the uh, pricing information. So go ahead and click on new map this to a field. This order is going to be 200. Let's map this to total price. Total price done. So we have created two variables here and we have mapped it to the fields on the table. So let's go ahead and refresh our portal and go back to service request. Clicking on the uh, banner, it will take you to the home page. Go to request something, click on can we help. Create portion request will be available here. And this ideally have plan and total price details now. Go ahead and give this. And let's give total price as this. Submitting this will take us to a new page. It says, let's create a new request. So just to verify that, we we'll go back to our service request table. You can see zero five is created. Diamond is the one I gave. This is the price. And checking the history, this is the one that is has created. So at the uh, you know, parallelly, uh, if we actually look into our emails, we have configured the notification to send some emails. So this would have triggered an email. Here we can see here's a provision request. And this is the one that just got created. So our emails work, we can see uh, record producers are working and this is where the service catwalk will come into picture. So there are many such use cases which we can use and everything follows its own uh, workflow. We can create our own workflows and flow designers to honor this particular request.